Welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox where we look at the nuts and bolts of self-employed life in the UK. In this series of videos, I'm showing you how to make your very own business website from scratch. Not using just any old website, but I'm showing you how I made this actual website for this actual YouTube channel. And today's job is to install WordPress. If you haven't already watched parts one to four, Links are in the description below. I'm assuming you've done everything in part four to get your web hosting account ready for your WordPress installation. So let's rewind back to August 2018 when I first got this project up and running. So you're gonna see me install a slightly older version of WordPress, obviously, because you're probably watching this in the future anyway. It doesn't really affect anything because the overall process for installing WordPress is always more or less the same. And in future videos, you're gonna see me updating WordPress and we're gonna gradually get more and more up to present day anyway. With all that said and done, let's crack on and install WordPress. Right, exciting times. Let's get our small business toolbox website up and running. Time to install WordPress. So the first thing that we're gonna to have to do is get our web files downloaded from WordPress and uploaded onto our website. Again, it sounds scary, it's really not. In order to do that, we're gonna use a thing called FTP software. And FTP software is used to transfer files onto websites. I like to use a piece of software called FileZilla. If you go to filezilla-project.org, you should find it on there. Just go on and download the client that is suitable for you and install it onto your machine. You're not installing the server, it's the client that you're gonna install. So you click on the client one and you're gonna download either the Windows or the Mac one. But if you want to install a different piece of FTP software, that's completely up to you. But I'm gonna show you in FileZilla. So once you've got it all downloaded and installed, you should see something along the lines of this. Again, it looks a little bit intimidating, but all you need to think of is the left-hand side of the screen is your computer, the right-hand side of the screen is your website. So the first thing we're gonna do, go to File and Site Manager, and we're gonna create a connection to your website. And to do that, we'll do New Site. We'll give it a name over here. We'll just call it My Website. And then over on the right here, we need to give it some details so it knows how to connect. And this is where we're gonna use, do you remember when we set up the FTP details? This is where we're gonna put it. So refer back to your magic document full of usernames and passwords. We're gonna put the host in, which is the server name that you should have copied and pasted off your cPanel. We're gonna use the user account that we set up and we're gonna copy in the password for that FTP user account as well. And click OK, don't click connect yet, just click OK. And now, just so that you can refer back to it at a later date, go back to File and Site Manager, and you should see that that is permanently saved there under my website, because you might have connections to lots of different websites, and this is how you would set that up. So just click connect, and here we go. We're into your web hosting. Now, you can cause serious damage by deleting the wrong things from here. So do be careful. But the thing that you're gonna to want to go into is a folder called public HTML. And then within that, you should have a folder which is the same as your domain name. I'm just gonna go into the small business toolbox folder and you should see something along the lines of that. So we're now ready to download WordPress. So you go to wordpress.org and you press get WordPress. And then we press download WordPress. And you can see it's downloading here. We'll just open that folder. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create, because at the minute it's a zip file. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a normal folder to put that in and all we're going to do is extract it all to that folder so 
So all I've done is dragged and dropped from the zip file over to this new folder because we do need to unzip it. Okay, so close the zip file. Let's close WordPress.org. And this is our WordPress installation files. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the file. And by the way, if you're not seeing file extensions, do make sure, in other words, the little dot whatever you are for doing all this sort of stuff, it is really useful to be able to see the file extensions. You do that in view and just tick that box that says file name extensions. You see if I switch that off, they all disappear. You do want to be able to see file extensions. And we're going to go into the file called WP config. And you'll see there's a WP config sample there. And we're going to create a brand new one. So all we're going to do is we're going to copy that. So I'm just going to do control C, control V. And there we go. I've made a new one. And then I'm going to hit F2 to rename it. And we're going to take all of this to turn it into wpconfig.php. We're then going to edit it. And the easiest way to edit it in Windows is with WordPad. So again, this looks a little bit intimidating, but it's really nothing to worry about. All we need to put in here is your database name, username and password that we created in the last video. So the database name that we set up, I'm just popping it in here where it says database name here. Copy it out of your magic document that's got all your usernames and passwords and whatnot in. And we're going to delete the bit that says database name here, and you're going to paste in your database name. And then the next thing that we're going to do is your database username, which is this one here, username here, hit delete, and just copy and paste in your database username. And then finally, your database password, which just goes at the bottom here, where it says password here. So delete that out and put in the password that you've already created when you were setting the database up. We did all of that in the previous video. So if you're missing any of this information or it doesn't seem to work properly, go back to the previous video and make sure you've not missed anything. The next thing we need to change, if you scroll down, is these little keys here. You see where it says define auth key, blah, 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 and it says put your unique phrase here. Well, you can make up your own phrases, but it's much easier to get the internet to do it for you. Just go to this address here. So just copy that, bring up a web browser and just paste that address in, hit enter, and it'll come up with all these random keys for you. And it saves you having to come up with it. Just every time you go in, that'll come up. Look, just press enter. Every time it'll change it to a new set of random things. So all you need to do is copy that, control C to copy, go back to your WP config file, and we're just going to paste it everywhere it says define. So basically that section there, hit delete, and you're going to just control V and paste it in. Just pop that down at the next line. So it should end up looking something like that, but obviously with different pass keys in here. Then the final thing we're going to change is this WordPress database table prefix down towards the bottom here. If we just scroll down a little bit more, and it's just this little thing here that says WP underscore. By default, that's the same for everyone, but we don't want to make life easy for the hackers. So we're going to change that to make it a little bit harder to guess. And all we're going to do after the underscore, type in five or six random letters and numbers, and then another underscore at the end. Once you've done that, click save, come out of your text editor, and you're ready to upload everything to your web host. Right, so dead straightforward. We're going to just basically copy and paste all these files onto your web server in FileZilla. So bring up FileZilla. You might find that it's disconnected from your website because it does periodically just randomly disconnect. So if you just click on the little drop down where it says open site manager or whatever, 
click on that and you should have that link to your website that you created earlier and if you just click that it'll connect straight up and everything on the right here is now the contents of your web server your everything on here is site ground it's not on your computer it's on the internet don't touch anything in here unless you know what you're doing there's only one folder you should be going into and that's the public HTML folder for the minute so just double click in the public HTML and then if you've got more than one website you should have a folder per domain name within here so go into the folder for your particular website so obviously for me it's smallbusinesstoolbox.uk and from there dead simple we're going to copy all of those wordpress files that you've downloaded into this little window at the bottom here so just go into your explorer window that's got the wordpress in and the wp config that you've changed select all of that and just drag it in there and that'll take a little while to upload. You'll see here, queued files. So that'll take five minutes or so to upload everything. And that's it all done. Right, moment of truth. Go to your website and hit F5. Fingers crossed. And if everything's worked, you should get something along the lines of this popping up. You, we're going to go through the WordPress install now. So this is going to install everything onto your website. All the files are there, but it's just going to kind of configure itself. Uh, let's see what we can do. English UK. Site title. Small business toolbox. And guess what? We're setting up more usernames. This is your main admin username for your website. So give it a name that people aren't going to guess. And make note of all of these, otherwise you'll not be able to log in. You can use the default password that they give you if you want, or you can create your own. And this is where you're gonna use your WordPress admin email account that we set up in the previous video. I called mine admin-andy at smallbusinesstoolbox.uk. Obviously I'll be changing that afterwards, but it's your admin one that you need here, not the contact one, not the user one. And for the minute, we're going to discourage search engines from indexing this site. We don't want search engines to do anything with it at the minute. Install WordPress. WordPress installed. Thank you. Login. So, we're now, look, if we change this to get rid of the login page, watch, we've got a website. I mean, it's a pretty empty website at the minute, but we've got a website. We're up and running. We're gonna now go through a few basic little config things before getting into the nitty gritty of, of getting everything set up. So I wanna go to that wplogin.php that you saw before. This is your login page for the website, and you're gonna use that username password that you've just set up. This is your WordPress login. So we're gonna do login. And hey presto, welcome to your WordPress dashboard. This is where you're gonna control, you're gonna get very used to this because you can control everything about your website from here. Let's just dismiss some of the stuff that it tells you. So let's take you through a few, we're gonna just clean this up a little bit because we want this to be as bare bones as possible. So you're going to go into plugins over on the left there and we're going to delete all of the plugins that are there by default. Delete, apply. Okay. We're also going to go into pages and we're going to delete all of the pages that are there by default. Apply. We're also going to go to posts and delete any posts out of there. You should probably just have one Hello World post, but we're just going to do bulk actions, move to bin, apply. We're going to go to categories. At the minute, we've just got this uncategorized thing. At the more, what I would suggest you do is just rename that to blog or, or something on the off chance you ever set up a blog. 
We'll come back to that later. Let's just go to settings. And at the minute we've got small business toolbox and just another WordPress site. We're going to change that to, well, we'll just change it to small business tips for, for now. That'll do. Everything else on this page, you should be able to just leave as it is. At the bottom of the page, click save changes. Then we're going to go on the discussion option and we're going to change a couple of things in here. We're going to switch off um, pingbacks and trackbacks. We're not going to allow anyone to comment on new articles. I'll just save changes. And then into permalinks. And you're going to change the permalink to post name. That's your best option there. Save changes. Appearance. And you, you'll see we've got various themes installed here. At the moment, we're just going to use a 2017 theme. It's awesome. So let's get rid of these other themes. We don't want extra stuff that we're not going to use. So all you do, let me just show you that again. Click on the 2015 theme in this case. Click on it and click delete. OK. And we'll do the same with 2016. Click on it, delete. OK. So now we've only got the 2017 theme installed. We've got a pretty clean installation now. Let, let's just have a look at things like uh, widgets. Sometimes it gives you a few that you don't need. Look at all this. And for the minute, we're just going to get rid of them all. All you need to do, delete, 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 delete. Delete, delete. Footer, nothing there. Footer two, nothing there, all good. We've got our WordPress website up and running. This is very exciting. Now, there are some very important security considerations when it comes to running any website, not just WordPress. In future videos, we're gonna lock everything down to make it as hard as possible for anyone to hack into the website. This is known as hardening the WordPress installation. If you went through SiteGround for your web hosting using the link that I gave you and you purchased the SG Site Scanner option, then that's a good start for keeping things secure. But there's a few other things that we're gonna cover off later on. Now, I also want to give you a couple of important tips regarding FTP. FTP isn't particularly secure. If you remember when we set up our FTP account in FileZilla back at the start of this video, there was an option we brushed over that said use explicit FTP over TLS if available. Translated into English, that basically means connect to my website in a secure way if possible. Now, FTP security is too big a topic to cover in this video, but you're gonna be using your FTP account very rarely. So just out of good practice, I would suggest never use FTP if you're using a public Wi-Fi connection. You should be absolutely fine if you're in your own house, but if you're in a coffee shop, I would avoid using FTP software such as FileZilla. Secondly, because you use the FTP account so rarely, just delete the FTP account when you're not using it. Just be really careful that you don't delete the files that are associated with that FTP account. Because if you do, you'll delete your entire website. But you can always create a new FTP account anytime you like. So if you just get rid of it when you're not using it, it just removes it as a point of entry. As I say, we'll cover security a little bit more in future videos. For the minute, don't panic too much because nobody knows about your website and for now you're gonna keep it that way. I need to crack on and get this website and YouTube channel up and running. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a logo. Take care, folks, and see you next time.